Hi, After Buzzers. You're watching the After Buzz TV After Show for Containment Season 1, Episode 7, Inferno. Join us as we break down the episode and give you our thoughts and predictions. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. This is a perfect song because Inferno and those tweakers fell into a ring of fire. They did. They, they really did. did. You guys. They really did. I'm your host, Katie Campbell, and you can find me on Twitter at Katie E.E. Campbell. That's Katie with three E's Campbell. And across the table, I have Yvette Sanchez. Hey, guys. What's up? You can find me on Twitter at Sports and Sass, and that's with three S's. And Gabriel Gonzalez. Hey, guys. You can catch me on Twitter at Double G on TV. Awesome. So before we get into tonight's episode, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in with us every week and make sure you are thank subscribed you. to us on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash TV. You can also find us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Give us that five star thumbs up, leave a comment and tweet us using the hashtag ABTV containment because we want to know mm -hmm. your guys' thoughts. I mean, we're already, this is like more than halfway through the season, yeah, yep, which is crazy. Seven. So just about half. Yeah, yeah, halfway. we're, we're, we're just hit more the mark. than halfway. So how are you guys feeling so far on you know it's episode seven? We're halfway through. What do you guys think about the episode? I feel sick. No, just kidding. You're no. Sick. I, I think uh, I think I think now is where everything's gonna start picking up, and every episode is gonna be like a, yeah. oh my god, what the heck is going on type episode. Like as, as far as up to now, everything's been leading up to everything mm -hmm. very nicely, and now everything like. Things are gonna fall apart. Things craziness. are gonna hit the fan. So the craziness is gonna get get there. I agree. I feel like we're getting a lot closer to some more of our favorite characters are gonna start getting into a little more trouble. I yes. know. Possibly I mean, dying, maybe. We're getting closer. Yeah. And I think Tiana said in our week one after show that around episode eight is when we start to see the episode thirteen or day, day 13. thirteen. Yeah. yeah. So that's gonna it's gonna get really exciting really quick. Well, that's what then, I like about it. And then team, you know, team Trey. Um, oh. He told us too that after this it was gonna start. After this episode, it was gonna start picking up. Yeah. Yep. So I was really stressed out in this episode. <laughs> I, I was. know you were. It was a bit, like tension was it. high. Yeah. It was stressful. Like guys, you don't realize that hair of hers even more on it. No, I'm just oh, kidding. <laughs> It was Those like beautiful locks. all over the place because I was so stressed. Is that what you're saying? I think so. I mean, Maybe. I didn't know that was possible. I sit <laughs> next to you usually and I'm like, damn. Stressful. Like, no, just kidding. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Lex and what's going on outside the court in okay. with the National Guard because they were called in. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So they're creating a safe zone. How long? What did he say? A hundred? A hundred yards. Yeah. Okay. He said a hundred yards from... The, the cordon the from cordon. the wall for like safe zone or something like that. So I'm pretty sure it was 100 yards. And they're kind of like facing off with, you know, Lex thinks this isn't a good idea, right. you know, and then the National Guard says, no, this is good. This is going to be a buffer. So, you know, we're kicking people out of their homes. Yeah, but we're getting them away from the cordon. What do you guys think about what's the best plan? Well, now it seems to me like there's just they're just adding more. So it's like a like a pre cordon before you get to the cordon Ooh. is what I feel like. It's like yeah. almost like kind of like oh you have nothing to worry about and then okay well you're gonna go into the court i feel it's kind of like a way to just like kind of not throw people into it but then i don't know it's like it's weird i feel like there's really no need for it unless there was something there which i'm calling it now okay that's where we're probably gonna see dr cannards okay mm. okay and there's gonna be something funky going on in that little area that's 100 yards from the cordon well, I just feel like it could get intense with, you know, all the food problems and the, and people being out of their homes. We're, we're seeing those issues inside the cordon. So this, like, 100 yards outside is going to start having those little effects, too. I have a feeling like this is, like, the hierarchy, and yeah. they are the more um, privileged the National Guard. bunch that are going to yeah. be in the 100-yard area oh. that's away from the ground. I feel like that's going to be the privileged area, rather. So, like, when the food comes... Their first come, first serve, then it goes to them. That's what I feel. But wouldn't the National uh, Guard, I mean, they're outside the court and they didn't have to worry about limited food, though? Well, the people. The oh, people the people that inside. Are the, people, the people that people are in the shelters. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, wait. So what? you're viewing it as Lex has the better idea. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be kicking these people out. How are you feeling? I agree with that. I feel like 
why would you add more tension to it? Like Yvette said, I mean, you already have the people inside staying away from the fence and the wall. Now the people on the outside are being more pressured to it. So when you have a wall in any kind of movie, TV show, book, it doesn't matter. You got people who are going to want to cross it, you know, on one side or the other. Right. What's cool about containment, they're doing it on both. And so we're going to see... People are going to like Lex. We're going to maybe want to try to get in. People are already trying to get out. So I think they're just trying to burn that candlestick from both ends with that. But as far as, you know, the storyline is like, why? This is, we're getting closer to the straw that breaks the camel's back. Mm -hmm. And that's what I didn't like about it. So I think Lex was perfectly right. It's like, why are you doing he has, this? He has a reason for the inclination. Now, all of us are just trying to figure out what that inclination is for. Right. And who's to say, Lex brings it up, like, that these people are going to go to these shelters. Mm -hmm. You know, they were assigned, there's six shelters yeah. right. that these people are assigned to, but they might not go there. And and the National Guard is banking on them just going there, and yeah, they'll feed them and take care of them. But what if they don't go there? Then we're going to have <laughs> problems, maybe. People are going to start being hungry. I think that's how people are going to start to retaliate as well. Ooh, Like, I think it's going to cause total it's gonna cause chaos that that little area that the national guard has is gonna cause chaos it's just yeah. it's not it's they're 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 buttering us up for it yeah someone's buttering our muffin yeah like they said in mean girls <laughs> oh uh, when i see it i think about because we obviously it's influenced so much by the real world events so mm -hmm. when i'm looking at that i'm thinking they had a similar situation with uh, Katrina and uh, the people in New Orleans going to the Superdome and mm -hmm. you know they were all evacuated from their homes right. obviously you know th all those stories got out about oh they're not getting food and yeah. like you said people weren't going or where do they have to go right. so I think that's what we're going to start seeing you know obviously we got a bit of Lex's dad we see now it I like how they set that up yeah because you know it's oh Lex is saying it from the role of a police officer my people but we saw he had his ulterior motives, why he was so passionate with uh, right. the, the man in charge from the National Guard. So I really like that. But I think that's what it's that's what we're supposed to kind of draw it from. Maybe that this is the stuff you didn't see that's going on with these big situations. Right. If they were real. Yeah. And speaking mm -hmm. about Lex's dad, um, that relationship is weird. And I think that they suffered the relationship suffered because of. Lex's views as a cop and the dad's views as a cop is it, am I picking that up correctly because the cop <coughs> lost his pension for hitting his um, superior yeah for calling him a nasty word uh-huh so the dad has kind of a warped view on how I, all of that runs I don't know if it's that or maybe he just has a resentment towards his own son I mean that could but be it for what for still being, you know, <laughs> being, a cop. being a cop and being able to compose well, himself. I think he's starting to understand Why? what his father yeah. is talking about. The apple about. doesn't fall far from the tree. Mm -hmm. So I think, but if it, in, in watching them talk and interact, I think there's just like a form of resentment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he was able to keep his composure. I didn't. I lost my pension. I lost this. But then we all know it's only a matter of time before... Lex loses his, you know, yeah. loses his, and he just goes for it, too. So maybe he might look at his dad like, you know, you broke the code of conduct, you're mm. disrespectful, and the other one's looking at him like, you can compose yourself, and now it's just going to be like two worlds collide, both worlds meet. They understand each other. Exactly. I love mm. that he takes his keys, too. I think, yeah, I thought that was very touching. One of the biggest things I think that we got from that is that you see Lex, you know, we seen so much of him he's walking that line he's on the straight and narrow mm -hmm. now with his father who obviously we take it that you know he probably used to be a lot like lex as an officer right but now you know lex is drawing those parallels about when things get really tight when things get real there's you're gonna cross that line and right. you know i think lex he's been able probably his whole career to operate on the side of the law on the side of the people He's getting closer to that time where he's about to have to make some decisions that they're about to challenge everything he believes. And I think uh, that's going to be really exciting because now we see, you know, he's getting more and more of those personal motivations mm -hmm. in. He's getting that phone call. He's getting he's seeing people he knows and cares about more than just Jake and Jana being affected. So I think that's just raising all that tension is pulling tight on that string for Lex. Right. 
Was he giving those cops orders to outside to follow what the National Guard was saying? I thought so. I thought okay. he was trying to tell everyone just, you know, hey, this is the program we're on right now, guys. You know, he's being a good soldier, you know, right. for want of a better term and saying, hey, you know, follow the rules. These are the guys, you know, it's we still have a system. We still have order out here. Let's keep it that way. Okay. And you mentioned the phone call that he received, which we'll dive more into that. But Jana was panicked, you know, and this is the woman he oh, loves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It sounded like she was being attacked. So that was the breaking point. And he was going over the wall. He was going over the wall. Which is what you guys were saying, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For how long? Since episode one? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, I think I was like episode two. I was like, he's going to do the wall. He's going to do. Yeah. But I wish I would have seen him a little more um, distraught in the face over the phone call yeah i think we saw her more like losing it like i need your help i need your help and he was almost like confused which i understand because in that situation you would be confused because you don't know what's going on the phone call the the first thing that's going through his head is how did she get that phone is what his Mm -hmm. whole thing was because when he saw it he picked it up so to hear her he at this point doesn't even know what the situation is he doesn't know if she's right outside if she's with someone if she's in there so then you know she or he hears her yelling and being attacked but I just felt like there wasn't I don't know maybe it was the way it was edited like I wish I would have seen him like totally lose it just start running and going for that wall and then them grabbing him but he tried to be smart about it by turning off the electric fence which was a good plan this is why I would have died (laughs) although (laughs) oh I would have been zapped off oh my gosh like full Jurassic Park yeah I just run and jumped the fence (laughs) yeah and I can't well I feel like the National Guard they were waiting for that. What was, yes. it, Cap- what was his yes. name? Captain Scott? Yeah. Captain yeah. Scott. I feel like they're they're not working together. No. They, they, and they don't want to. So any way that they can um, gain the seniority, gain the upper hand, mm-hmm. they're going to do it. Yeah. And like I, like you said, like they were waiting for it. They were waiting for the uh-oh. They were waiting for the oops. They're like, we're one step ahead of you. We know someone's going to mess up. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Well, I think the part of things and also um Lex's boss I forget his name in the moment right now but um that Chief, when the Chief. The, yes yeah. when the national guard comes in <laughs> essentially what they do they essentially override the chain of command in any kind of local area when That's they come true. into those communities the national guard and you know yeah it's only in you know necessary situations but you know we know that for the police there it is very stressful cuz suddenly hey, your boss isn't your boss anymore. It's this new guy who doesn't mm-hmm. know you, who is, quite frankly, you know, has his own agenda. Like, hey, he doesn't care about necessarily the people. He's mm-hmm. got to focus on the situation. Right. You know, as far as, you know, to make an omelet, break a few eggs, you know, he has to do what's necessary. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where a lot of that tension comes in with Lex and them. And that's true. And like you said, they also, they have to show their power because in a situation exactly. like and that, hard to give up power once you had it yeah but like you said you know once situations like that comes in the national guard comes in it's like okay stand down you don't know anything we and i'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure in the next episode we're gonna see that they know a lot more of what's going on yeah yeah than what you know what everyone else does what the cops do and all that so i have a feeling that's gonna happen but this is where and we were talking about it last week this is where you're gonna see survival of the fittest everyone's doing their own thing to make it out, to uh-huh. be healthy, and screw the rules, screw how That's it works. That's going to cause chaos. Exactly. Well, by the end of it, we see he's being handcuffed and taken away in a car or va- whatever that is, yeah. truck <laughs> thing. And um, he's basically, I feel sad for him because he doesn't even know what's going on with Jana at this point. He's freaking out. Yeah. Love of his life could be dead. We know differently at this point. But I don't know. Do you think he's going to be really reprimanded by all of that um if i wouldn't say su- reprimanded but there's gonna be quite the discussion okay and there's gonna be quite the uh they're gonna make things a lot more difficult for him he's gonna I be think. less in the loop than he already is because he's kind yeah, of out of he's gonna bit. be super uh, less in the uh, loop actually i think it's uh, i actually think no but it's a different kind of s- situation now now we saw the teaser obviously yeah i think Lommers that leash that he's had because he hasn't necessarily caused trouble very small yeah very tight so i think obviously lex has been like hey no one in no one out even when he's it's his own people Mm -hmm. 
we see Lammers right. has her own agenda, and I think it's going to be, hey, you're either going to listen to me now, or we could leave you in that van until we feel like it. I think that's what's going to happen now mm. with Lex, that if he wants to maintain his freedom, because this is a serious violation. Yeah. You know, it like his, we talked about maybe, or they talked about the episode, pension, his future, his job, all of that. They're probably going to threaten him with that. We'll, yes. we'll take this away. We'll do that. You don't do and this. Just, hey, we'll I don't care about that at the moment. Yeah. You know? It's, it's going to get really sticky. Yeah. It's going to get sticky. And it's going to be one of those things that you're going to be like, really? You're going to make them between that or this? Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be ridiculous. But yeah. in, you know, real life, those situations, when someone has the upper hand, they're going to bribe you with yeah. things like that. And they're going to scare you with things like that. Scare tactics. So yeah. mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about what's going on at BitScan Data Recovery the most stressful stuff that we've seen, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. What I thought was interesting about this whole episode is that it all took place in night nine. And I feel like, did we have that in an episode before? We had like day nine, night nine, or not nine specifically, but like day one, night one, day two. You yeah. know, we've had multiples, but this Last all... episode was day nine, all of it, right? The whole thing? Yes. So oh, yeah, okay. so it was right. day nine and then night nine. Oh, I like so that. So it's but, now... But... It's either going to start breaking it down into days and nights, or it's going to start... I think... Well, we get to the day more, 13. Yeah, I think the more background story that there is, the more they're going to split it. But if there's not much of a background story, they're just going to, you know, mesh the days and yeah. the nights okay, together. I'm, we've been told how many days, roughly, that it lasts. I just can't remember. 20... I it, is it 20? 22. Is it going to be Was 21? it 22? I thought maybe it was 18. Oh, yeah, but we know okay. it's over 15, right? I think okay. we can agree. Over, okay, so, so over you know, two weeks. We know that the episode before the last one, they kind of jumped ahead about five days. And then with the food, obviously, you know, it was about five days since they've been burning mm-hmm. through food. So <coughs> I think certain storylines, they're going to move them along. I think we're probably going to see a jump after this one yeah. slightly. Mm-hmm. But I think that, um, no, you're right on the money. Yeah. I yeah. think it's weird that, you know, just how much tension is being put on these characters in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. It's being done very very well mm-hmm. and i really yeah. love the bit scan i like this episode because it yeah. had the most at stake for a lot for of the characters ev- well, we yeah, know. For, I, right? but i just can't wait for that episode that has everyone back in it like you see and the chaos everyone that's in the next chaos. episode yes yes so we have the thug who does he have a name i don't think we got his name we we're got jojo call... before we got yeah, Man, jojo we're gonna one. call him thug, thug. nasty thug, thug nasty thug okay nasty so what about the next one that we see though what do we call him Ultra Thug Nasty. Okay. <laughs> so thug, Hashtag Ultra Thug Nasty. So Thug Nasty gets in and he gets the phone and he, you know, says, I'm taking these three with me. Xander, Teresa, and the mom. Right. And, um, I mean, he's smart with his, like, get the phone first and then this is what's going down. Right. But Jake's in the building because oh, he's bringing Jake. the flash drive. <laughs> Jake is in the building. <laughs> and he stops him and he gets the, th- he tells the thug to get out. Like, take yeah. the phone and leave. Um, just lay down that justice. You can't, I yeah. you can't say it. no to that handsome face. Yeah. He was well, just like, well, I'm pretty sure a gun you, to his head, what right? What are you talking about, though, Yvette? I would, I would be like, whatever you want me to do, I will abide by your rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would. No, just kidding. I'm so, sorry. Jake brings this flash drive, and Jana has to recover the data and decrypt it. And she does that. Right. Um, she's able to do it. with. There was some trouble, though. It took mm-hmm. her the whole night or a couple hours or however long it did. But... Um, did you guys think she actually watched it? Do you I mean, watch it if you decrypt it? If I would have, yeah. I mean, if I, if it were me, let's be honest. <laughs> um, I'm a very nosy person. When someone gives me something, they're like, "Oh, you can't look at it." I'd be like, "Well, then why did you give it to me? Yeah. You obviously <laughs> want me to see something." So, I mean, there's no way that she did it. I mean. You know what's weird? I don't think she did. Yeah. Just because of the way she acted. I feel like if she had seen something like, oh, my God. But we don't know. She, maybe she got a great poker face. I know. she's Okay, yeah, we saw her show off a lot of skills this episode. I just don't think that's one of them. She's pretty, like, she's pretty hardcore. So if she saw something. Now, maybe she saw something because she said, hopefully it makes sense. Hmm. Right? She told that to him when she gave it to him. She said, here, hopefully it all makes sense. Okay. So... Maybe she did see something, but doesn't understand, what but doesn't understand right. what's going on. Whereas, um, whereas Lex and Jake, they know what they're looking for. They know what they need to see. So maybe she saw a couple things, and she's like, "Okay, well, I saw this, right. this, and this, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make sense." So hopefully, to you, this makes sense. Because all she knows at this point is that it's surveillance video from the first day that the the virus mm-hmm. was, or that we found out about the virus. 
don't know what Dr. Cannards knows, but Jake, uh, I love their little heart to heart, him bringing up Katie to her. You know, that was really sweet. And it was. He's like, instead of him, Mm -hmm. you know, when he was about to die, he wasn't worried about dying. He was worried about not seeing her again. You know, it's a sign of love. Like, he really does love her, you know, but. That was so touching. It gave me heartburn. Yeah. Did you guys feel though that they had some kind of a flirty connection? That's what I thought. Yeah. I, thought you I know. was like, I was like, whoa! I was like, okay, is he now? Is he saying this so she can kind of like jump off a little bit? Or, I mean, that's how it could have come off across, right? You know, but they always say like the person you confide in when you're fighting with your significant other, like you shouldn't because. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say the exact quote because it's a bit vulgar, but you know, a shoulder to cry on is a whatever. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think I just up. figured that. I, I got it. I just yeah. But that that's what I'm saying. But I don't think that any of them were like in a a state of like there's something going wrong. Yeah. I just feel like maybe Jake is still like I still haven't really told her how I felt, and yeah. he was just kind of saying it. So she's like, yeah, you know, don't forget to tell her and make sure you tell her. I think she was saying that as as coming from a place of like, she felt bad. She didn't right jump in with Lex and go all in and move in and, you know, didn't say the things that she felt. She didn't know that she was going to be in this situation. What's crazy, I like how they wrapped so much up so little. And I think that's just testament to that acting in that moment that we saw, hey, you know, they do have a complicated relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Aren't not regular. Relationships complicated. Okay, not as complicated as hey, I used to be with you, now I'm with your best friend, but yeah. we're all three of us are somehow still cool. So I thought yeah. it was kind of weird me out the most. Those yeah, little triangles. Yeah. yeah. We talked about well, it week one. Remember, it's like you know what I. No, it doesn't work that way. It's not an episode mm-hmm. of Friends where mm-hmm. you all still get along. But, yeah. Uh, well, I feel like with with them, they didn't really have a relationship. It was kind of like a date, and he was probably looking at her like not serious, yeah. not whereas he's looking at it differently. Like probably, a fling. Yeah. yeah, right, a Katie fling, and, was... and she might have liked him, and and then it just went south, and mm-hmm. then she met his best friend, exactly. that went beautifully. So maybe there is some kind of like obvious a- attraction there or something. Obviously, but she's they attracted were... to him. There's there's no. Right. I mean, there's no there's no woman in that but they position respect that's each not going to look at him and be like. Oh my God! Well, these are my last dying days. But they I res- got lucky. They respect each other. <laughs> they know, do. You know who yeah. I really love is Xander. I think he's so sweet to Teresa. That to me, out of like the, out of all of the love interests, out of all of the you know little love stories that are going on in the mm-hmm. show, that one is my favorite. Mine too. That one is my favorite because he is just showing how much he loves her, how much he's willing to do for her, like. He's read seven pregnancy books or something. What a sweetheart. Oh, my God. You know? And it makes me so mad when, when the mom's just really like, you guys aren't ready to be parents. Mm-hmm. Xander, you don't know what you're talking about. She's just bashing. Hashtag be like Xander. Yeah, for real. Because <laughs> like the Xander. mom doesn't know what she's talking about. It's true. What I like about that is, you know, we're seeing Xander. We see him very adolescent. It's a very young and almost naive kind of thing. Oh, we're going to run away together. We're going to take over Impulsive. the you know. But then you see how he very quickly matures and he becomes a man. Exactly. We see, you know what, he's he's literally growing up within like 22 days. You know, we see so much of him, Mm -hmm. you know, and I really like the way they're developing his character. And I thought that was very charming. Like, hey, I read it. But I got to keep her calm. Hey, the mom, though, she did play that card. And I I feel like, you know, if I were Xander, I would agree. It's like, okay, you may have read seven books. I actually did have a child. And I'm like. But well, yeah, of course, that's anyone. That's just though. a mom thing to say. Right. But I like how he, a hey, he won up to. Her. Yeah, he did because yes. here's the thing. Yeah, you did give birth to a child, but mm-hmm. he has a lot of knowledge too from reading those seven books. So it's so maybe you have the real world experience of giving birth, but you can't discount him. Well, for all we know, though, he might have real world experience. Maybe bringing up a brother or a sister, or right. we don't know because there's not much of a backstory right. to Xander. So for all we know, he has a backstory himself where, you know what, at a young age, I had to be man of the house or I had to be, you know, head of the household. So right. I just mm-hmm. think, I just think at the end of the day, she's a mom. And to be honest, no mom wants to see their teenage daughter pregnant out of wedlock. Right. So you she's know, fighting the whole so idea So she's fighting the whole thing, no matter how much. But of course, mm-hmm. if, She's fine after the 48 hours. You know, once that baby gets there, all of that changes. Right. Uh, well, because 
I mean, I've seen it. I don't know how many countless times I can say I've seen, you know, parents like, yeah. no, I'm totally against, I'm totally against the minute that baby pops out. Oh my gosh, it's the best thing right. in the world. I was how can you not love it? We have to point out, because when she has that touching moment with Teresa before that event... Well, um, yeah, ugh. we'll get to that, though. Well, I was going to say, though, she ha mentions one line that, um, you know, I only made one mistake in my life. Mm. I would feel like, how young was she maybe when she had Teresa? Or mm -hmm. what were the circumstances there? So that's why I thought, okay, maybe now we know a little more about why she's so tough on Teresa and Xander. I thought that's well, exactly what a parent. A parent doesn't want their child to repeat their same mistakes. History so. tends to repeat itself. It though. does. If you view a lot of like, oh yeah, you know, I don't know. That, I think that's really interesting. When you look at when you look at, um, there's either there's two kinds of kids is what I've always said because I used to work with kids and mm -hmm. we've always said this. There's the kids that say, I want to be just like my parents, mm -hmm. or there's the kids who say, I don't want to make the same mistakes my parents did. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And no matter what you do, inevitably, either you're going to cause the same mistakes or you're not or, you know. Yeah. That's a, you know, I mean, we're not we're not too old either, any of us. So, you know what? One of the things that I'm I, old, I'm an old maid. Yeah, well, no. I'm an old maid. No one wants me anymore. No. I didn't want to say you're getting some wrinkles. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm, my no, God. No, I do have gray hair now, though. I did find gray hair. That's but okay. I, it doesn't. It's not an age thing. Yeah, I was no. just going to say. It's stress. It, it's <laughs> this crazy. Is stress. Yeah. Maybe you guys have gone through this. It's crazy how, you know, as you get older, you notice, like, did I just do something my mom or dad, like, would have said or done? Oh, yeah. And oh, that's guys, me always now. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you didn't think that it would happen like that, but then it's like, oh, my God, I, I'm just like them. Yeah. yeah, I was always the mom of the group, and I still am. Yeah. So. You, let's talk a little bit about the, the tweakers. I kind of thought... <laughs> They're trying to get in this bit scan data recovery place. And I, we were watching the previews. I'm not sure if I said it on the after show or not, mm -hmm. but I thought, is that the tweakers or is it the thugs or is it both? You know? Yeah, because we, should, we thought it was the thugs. I it well, was the, the thugs, thugs too. came with Teresa's mom. Just the one. Only Just one. the one. So we thought, we're like, oh, you know, the thugs are coming in, but then it was the, the tweakers. tweakers. The Honestly, thug let them in? Did he no, let no, them no, have no, access? No. Well, I mean, no. they killed him. They killed him, yes. but then they ended up coming in themselves. So I think once right. they killed him, they were able to get in. However, mm -hmm. it doesn't show that, so it leaves a lot to the imagination. But, I mean, well, they're all scorched yeah. now. And on, honestly, I could have done without the tweakers, like, way it got, in the it, beginning. It got confusing because we understand that, okay, they didn't use the elevator at first, so they did the stairs thing, and somehow they got to a lower floor. That's how they did the vent trick. Right, because the elevator, um, you, you can't get... You need the code. Yeah, you need... Yeah, you need the code to get up there. Yeah. And I think at the stair access, too, you need a code. You need the card yeah, to swipe uh, to get in. Yeah. yeah. So, um... And, but then later they cut the power and that's how right. they did the elevator scene right but I don't know if the the thug like told them because Jake was thinking the thug told them about the chemicals and that's what they're after which right. I think that that is what they were after but did they learn about that because the thug told them I feel like he wouldn't be like hey guys you know yeah I, no. I feel he wouldn't be friendly and be like hello guys let's all be friends and unless guess what's in there unless mad. he was in it with them or unless he was mad because they couldn't take the three right with them. exactly um, but what I do want to say about the situation is when one of the tweakers bites Teresa's mom, mm -hmm. are we seeing now a different reaction to the virus is what I'm saying. Because mm. they were burned. They were burned. And this guy literally jumped Listen. up and bit her. I think what it is is this guy's on severe drugs. I mean, there's stuff in the, in the news stories for, I don't know, years now, maybe before that, but I mm -hmm. remember some that I've read that these guys will take bath salts or whatever it oh, is yeah, and when then they start ate the person's face. eating people. So I think it's like, maybe this guy's so, because the whole thing we're told to believe as viewers is that these people are so tweaked out of their minds that, mm -hmm. you know, they don't know what's going on. They're not assessing the situation properly. They're just killing. They just want the drugs. So maybe this guy's like, I just got burned, but I can't feel it because I'm that drugged out. So I'm still alive. So let me eat you because I'm not even seeing you correctly. <laughs> I don't know. Eat you. That, that's what I thought. It's like, you know what? He's just on so much. You know, you hear those things like, hey, you could take enough that some people, they won't feel anything, you know, when right. you try to f hurt them physically. All right, well, we'll find some. We'll give you some. And then you tell us how it goes. Why me? Because. <laughs> Guys, I am so impressed with Jana this whole episode. She's really strong. 
and brave and she she burned them through the vents she's a, she's she, smart and she's quick on her feet she went into I don't boss think I could mode. be like that I in that situation it. like I think I could but with my look like the flame would go backwards <laughs> and like burn my hair off or burn me in the face oh. but she yeah she was very like she took charge and I'm telling you I love when she just got the guy by the hair and bashed his head into the railing and then let him go. I was like, That was yes. my favorite. You know yes. what? That is what I would have done. Yeah. Second to maybe seeing Jake finally about to dish out that cop justice in the first scene. Mm-hmm. Just watching her just throw down. Because we've seen her kind of be a little bit of the the princess in the castle as yeah. far as staying up there. So to see her just go boss mode and just like, <clears throat> it's like about damn time. No, hey, Her character is It's always fun to bash heads. Well, I think oh. just because, like, uh, finally we had more depth to her character because she's just kind of been like, oh, well, I have this thing with Lex and I'm in bit scan and we're not, not letting in people. We see now she's so... Po- how powerful she is, how strong mm-hmm. she well, is. Well, how powerful mentally. she is and then how, you know, certain situations bring out... Right. What mm-hmm. needs to be brought out, obviously. You could bring a hero out in people. When she mm-hmm. was in that stairwell, she was trying to fix the generator for the elevator. Right. Um, and she knocked that guy out and then they're running after her still and she like uh, again on her feet thought let's blow these guys up <laughs> with our chemicals um which was impressive yeah and right. we blew them up jake was a part of it and everything now she was cut in the um stairwell do you guys think she could be infected or is it just like cut you know i don't know if the thug was infected that's what I, I you know too. i don't know and, you know, obviously it's a cliffhanger. It's going to leave us, well, what, was she cut by a pipe? Was she mm-hmm. cut by, you know, this or that? Mm-hmm. Was it, you know, the thug? Did he touch her? You know, is she wet? So, I mean, I don't think she's going to be infected. But if she is, they did preview to the little boy and him having... Oh, the cure. The cure. Yeah. So I have a feeling if she is she might be one of the first ones either treated or the first ones that's like the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that um, Lex won't know about it and then he'll find out about it and then it's going to be a big old dramatic thing. Yeah. So if you guys want to rewrite the script, let me know because uh, I got a whole thing that we can go with on that one. He doesn't even know if she's alive right now. Exactly. So I think that might be the way he sees her. Mm -hmm. If maybe Jake thinks that she's infected like you gotta go see i i like that story there's just one thing hmm. we still got about six episodes left i don't think we could have a cure just yet because she would have to die in like you, 48 do, hours do you yeah. know how long they can drag that out but we got to get to day 22 maybe something that can prolong prolong okay, the virus okay, prolong okay. the I prolong the effects cure it. okay now i could get on that ship i didn't think of that yeah Okay, so how do you feel about Sam? I I was like, yeah, I love this character. And then Tiana brought up the fact last week that, oh, he's a little sketchy. And I think you guys were, were you guys both agreeing with the situation? Kind of. I think, you know, it is sketchy. Now now that you say, how did the tweakers get in? Oh, really? I'm you still Team so? Sam. Like, he's... There's four vents. Am there's I playing one fire advocate escape. here? I think so. Well, he he held, he's like, there's four vents, one fire escape. Let's attack that. And they, you know, they were working well, on the vents. That's what he's saying from what he knows. For mm. all he knows, he knew that there was another vent or something okay. like that. For mm. all we know. But this is just me playing devil's advocate. So everyone can sit there and start making up all these conspiracy theories right. and like what's going on. So for the sake of argument, let's say Sam has an ulterior motive. What is it if we were to speculate? Yeah, you know, what is it? Everyone has these ulterior motives and you don't know why. But do Like, you- look, like... What like why are they so obsessed with Teresa and Xander and the uh, mom? That's Trey. my thing. I, I we still have no clue why they are so gung ho that they need to be with them. I mm-hmm. had a theory about that actually, but for one, I think maybe Sam is just that token sociopath that just don't want to run into in a bad situation. Oh my God. I'm that, Team Sam, you guys. But you always I'm, need the crazy in the group. It's true. So you know. I, I don't Crazy know. I'm still on the fence for now. <laughs> but I thought about something. So we had Mikkel talk about you do what you need to and, you know, about Trey being That was very my homework. Smart. So you know, don't, you know. I was going to say, he probably loves when you called, what did we call the first goon? Team, 
Thug Nasty. Thug Nasty? Yeah. I was going to say, he's somewhere smiling right he now. Is, watching he is, that. he is, he is, because he knows I'm Team Trey. But, he um, knows I'm totally Team Trey. My thing is that, you know what, Why I thought about that. Why would you want to have them? Then I thought, okay, eventually the wall is going to come down. He has to leave the cordon, what that space is, right? Okay. How oh, do you get past police? Leverage. That's what I thought. It's gotcha. like, hey, she's not going to be much of a threat. The mom isn't going to be much of a threat. You know, if he's holding the gun, suddenly it's like, hey, exactly. Like, hey, you're going to let me out of here now. I thought that's where they were going with, hey, he needs to have a hostage. Mm -hmm. Right now, all he has is food. They can shoot him for that. Uh, Hostage, different situation. One, um, that's true. Very true. So we have Jake and Dennis also going to the fire escape. Mm -hmm. And they're attacked by two tweakers, right? Yes. Yes. So Jake ends up killing both of them because Dennis's gun that's been in the safe for a long time didn't work. <laughs> or do you think he couldn't shoot? No, he probably left shoot? the safety on. Thank you. That's okay. what I said. Didn't know how to use it. I, I do got to <laughs> say, that was my fa- favorite exchange of lines where he's yeah. like, I was saving it, you know, in case of emergency. And then Jenna's like, what the hell do you think we've that's been in? <laughs> like, yeah. I, like, my mentality, like, if something like that would have a big dad, go get the Magnum. Like, that would be, like, my first thing to, like, go get. Oh I feel like, hey, I, if I had known that was going to happen, I'd be sitting right there by the door with it. Like, no, it's mm-hmm. not going to go down Diego, like that. I would go to your house. My friend Diego has guns. I would go to your house. Oh, my God. Or Jarrell. You guys. Diego, you hang out with her? No, Diego or Jarrell. <laughs> I know how to lock and guns. load. Well, how are you guys feeling about Tony? He doesn't make it. <laughs> it's um, about damn time. I've been he, wanting him to die so listen, bad. He's been annoying for us because, you know, and the whole thing about him not wanting to let people in when he was actually let in in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we, we kind of get a little bit of the stress from him. Like, In his mind, he wants to reason with these tweakers, and nobody's listening to him, so he's going to go on his own and do it on his own, which is dumb. Because you can't even reason with the tweakers anyway, because if you try, they're already out of their mind. They're going to be like, yo, which is what they did. You can't, I'm just like any situation, you can't, you know, you can't reason with the tweaker, you can't reason with someone who's drunk, you can't reason with someone that's stubborn, you can't, you can't reason with those people, because once they make up their mind... That's it. Yeah. That's how it is. Or if they're not in the right state of mind, you're not going to get through to mm-hmm. them. Right. I think- so I just, I want to know, how did he stay standing for so long? <laughs> that was a really good point. In the elevator with an ax in his back. Like, I almost felt like when I saw him fall, like once the door opened, I was like, did huh. someone like Spider Man it up there and is like one of the tweakers in the elevator? Well, maybe like, that's they what I thought. leaned him on the doors as the doors were closing, like this. Uh-huh. They're closing. They're leaning him up <laughs> against the doors so when the doors open at the final destination, he falls forward. See? Yeah, but the axe was in the back. See, that's where I. Th- okay, you know what I, I mean? So I felt it like. I felt like. Oh, true. If but I, I felt like someone was genius? in there, but it went down and up so quick. Uh, so I felt like someone got into the elevator. Oh, they did. They yeah. did. Because they did, because then they ended up on the roof of it, right? No, they. someone got in, because right after that, we see one of the tweakers come in and start spitting blood all over the, the that's right. glass. Yes. Yeah. The he gl- was sick. So that's who came. There you go. There's the answer to that. I was gonna say, <laughs> There's the answer. He was, was not, it was not um, uh, weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> like, that's what I thought. All you needed was, like, the glasses. Yeah. See, my idea was that, okay, he's got the axe in him. If I'm an evil genius, I'm not saying the tweakers were, but let's have some fun with it. He's got the axe. He's, whoops, standing there. They prop him up with the handle against the <laughs> so This is getting very, like, intricate how you would what? do it. <laughs> I'm not saying I would do that to you. I, I, didn't say, I didn't say you would do it to me. You're just like, not that I'm an axe murderer or anything, but well, if I I'm had just saying, to. Like, if, we're, if we're getting creative with it, it's like, did they prop him up using the handle while it's in his back? That's how I he stayed no standing? Idea. But it's, it's the Visualize tweaker. Visualize it. <laughs> Listen, did you guys think See? Susie was going to die when she got trapped inside uh, the little glass door when the power went out? No. I did. You did? Uh-huh. I was so stressed out. She's claustrophobic. I hate when people can't breathe in shows. If anyone's drowning, I'm feeling like I'm suffocating. <laughs> Worst yeah. thing to watch. I, I thought they were going to hit us with a curveball because I said I thought it's going to be a two for one, Dennis and Tony, after mm. all the sleazy things they've done. But yeah. So I thought, okay, it's not Dennis. We're losing Susie, though. No, I didn't think she was going to die. I just thought it was, like, so... 
I think that was also put in there to like cause anxiety for the viewers. Like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Because I was just like, she's like, I can't, I don't want to get drinks. And I was just like, oh my god. I would be stressed out too if I'm claustrophobic. Yeah. You know? But is she claustrophobic? The lights are out, the tweakers are getting in. Yeah, they, that's what uh, Jana said. She's claustrophobic. Oh, okay. And immediately the first thing Susie said to Jana was, I can't breathe. There, I don't have air or that's something. That's right. She's like, air. you do have air. Stop it. You can't breathe. And yeah. What I thought was very well shot, you know, that I wanted to talk about real yeah. quick is um, how when she's by the by the door and because the lights are off, you see Jana when she's right there, but the second Jana walks away, how it's just pitch dark in there. Oh, scary. That, mm-hmm. that the way they just shot it put it together that was really well done and i thought that really added to the anxiety oh yeah of course because it adds like a depth of can't even see anything yeah like you can put yourself in there and be scared like whoa well i was scared of my own house yesterday the lights went out (laughs) oh yeah i was walking around i was like you uh, sleep with a nightlight no i don't well i sleep with the tv (laughs) okay or i fall fall asleep to watching (laughs) tv i have a feeling you're like a teddy bear person for some reason i do have a teddy bear it's about this big (laughs) his name is sir scarfington I love it. So at the, you guys mentioned the mom gets bit yep. and um, Gabriel, you brought up a little bit of her conversation. You know, she's got to mm-hmm. go to the hospital because mm-hmm. she might be infected. Now she has a little heart to heart with her daughter and Xander. And this is where she just spills her guts. She's, I'm sorry. You guys are going to be great parents. You know, um, that was emotional. It really I, like, was. You guys saw me. I was like, I'll tear it up. She and was. I was like, oh man. It's true. I know. She basically said goodbye because she you have no idea at this point. Basically, what's I think going that's what on. she was trying to do. She she was just trying to say her goodbye and um you know and even Teresa was like you were just being a mom, you were looking out for me. They love so each other. They do. The the they do and you know just to see those Xander saying like we'll go with you. Mhm. I mean that says a lot about his character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. I know. And she said you've got a good man in Xander. Finally. Oh, come. So Stop it only bashing took him. How many episodes? <laughs> I know, until she's about to possibly die. We really don't know um, if she Maybe will or that's not. that's what needs to happen. People need to possibly die. Well, we're getting closer and yeah. closer. So far, everything's really been affected our periphery characters. Mm-hmm. No, now it's, getting, it's just going uh, in. It's exactly. coming in. Exactly. So. Yeah, and it's getting good. At the end, we see uh, Jana and Jake talking. You know, she gives him the flash drive. Um, he's bringing it to Lex, and, and Jake... Um, is going to look into the fact that Jana was weirded out by Lex when she called Lex with this phone. He said it was a government issued phone. It was an APD SAT phone. Well, so, a- yeah. AD, a- APD SAT or STA? I think it was SAT. I want to say SAT, SAT yeah. but. Yeah. I thought, because remember that they don't know that the officer who was uh, thrown into the court. Yeah had those supplies so Lex wouldn't know and neither would Jake that hey there's a line to the outside it's more fishiness going yes. on it's going to make Jake and Lex you know not right. wanting to be on the side of the chief and Lommers and the, the doctor yeah because they're I mean they, they don't portray them as a, a dumb set of characters right. you know they they pretty much pin them as like yeah maybe two three two three days go by and okay everything starts clicking like let's go let's go so i think everything is just going to start clicking mm-hmm. i just want to see when they can all do it and i just want yeah. I, I i can't wait for the chaos to happen i love drama you will get it soon well bit scan is completely destroyed and Jana's brilliant idea is to okay we need to get somewhere else we're not gonna be able to fix this so we need to jump the wall no, that is not a Thank brilliant you. idea. <laughs> How are you guys feeling about that? Because I'm just, I'm annoyed that she wants to jump the wall. We, you don't she even was, know the consequences. People die when you jump the wall. She was doing so well. Yeah. She <laughs> went boss mode. She kicked some ass. I think and now she, she has that adrenaline, like, I can do anything. I got to talk to, to say l- some legs. And, <laughs> yeah. So I think now she, or maybe she does really feel the need, like she needs to get to Lex to let him know that she's okay. Well, well, we got Jake. We got Jake letting him know. That's what I thought. You know, I thought, well, I would stick with Jake. He, You know, he's held up somewhere. He's, okay, even though it's a dire situation, he's not running 24-7. He has to mm-hmm. stop somewhere. So I figured, like, hey, you know, we're going to have Jana and Katie team up a bit, and I think that's going to have Katie maybe show some action, you know, step up for Quentin or whoever else. So yeah. I felt like that's where we were going. Also, real quick. Oh, yeah. 
did Jake escort um, Teresa's mom? I think so. That's what, they, what's implied. That was, it was imbe- ambiguous, but I was like, wait, you didn't really just leave her, did you? No, no, I think he's yeah. taking no, her no, with I think him he's, he's going back. Yeah, yeah he's going back, so I think he's just going to take her. Let's okay. talk a little bit about predictions okay. and the previews for the next episode. So... Now. You're after They're coming for TV. you, Yvette. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, really? They're Scarier like my biggest than this fears. Stuff? I yeah. know, right? Oh, this stuff scares me like, more. Could you imagine getting abducted and then they can't find you and then it never happened and then they say you don't know it happens? Like, I am I definitely afraid of it. imagine it because I don't know if I believe in it. That's, See, that's another a, that's issue, That's the though. thing. I don't believe in it, but I'm still scared of it. Well, okay. Well, you know, maybe they're real. We don't know. But <laughs> predictions, so, <laughs> predictions, previews. For, like, unfortunately, we mm-hmm. have to skip a week. So we're not going to be back until June fourteenth. That's when the next episode is. Episode eight, the chaos that we've all the been chaos that we've all been for. waiting for. Um, but in the previews, we see Lex is in trouble because Lommers wants to sneak Thomas, who is basically immune at this point from this virus. He's the only one that we've seen so far. Um, She wants to sneak Thomas outside of the cordon um, to try to figure out what's going on. And the chief catches Lex doing that, right? So the chief is not even on the same page as Lommers, and he suspends Lex. I think he's suspending him over that. I think it goes to my theory that, okay, this is, they were trying to show, hey, Lex's job, his whole future as far as providing for Jana one day and all that, that's on the line. So I think, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, maybe Lommers is keeping it away from the chief too, but maybe they're working together. Hey, really put that pressure on him. Show him, hey, oh. he needs to listen mm. if he wants to keep his job. I'm worried everybody's on different pages. I mean, we have Jake standing up to Cannards. I think that's what it was. And then Jana, yeah, like he was yeah. right. questioning whatever he's... And Jana breaking out of BitScan. Every, now, everyone right now is instead of maybe thinking like, let's work as a team, everyone is like, everyone for themselves. And no one's on the same page. So let's work as a team, but not really type of thing? T- yeah, kind of like... Okay. It's starting to I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And if we m- meet up, then we meet up. If we don't, sorry. Can you do that one more Good time luck. with the fingers? <laughs> I'm going to do this. I don't even think I made a square. <laughs> well, no. you guys, I think the mom might not be infected. You know, she changed my mind because I was fully ready to see her go last week, and then it's like, man, you had to make me feel. Guilty of course, about she's gonna make now. you change your mind. Now she's, you know, pleading for forgiveness yeah, right before but, she you dies. Know, if I can't get rid of Lommers, I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> I need to get some kind of satisfaction. Like, you know what? I don't like them. Lommers, they don't make it. Lommers is not getting anywhere near the virus. She's like whole, fully protected. Yeah, she's I have full, a whole and if she does, it's gonna Lommers be like gonna go. it's gonna be like yeah. some freak thing where like yeah. someone's gonna like trip and be like, oh no. I spilled water all I, over I'm you. I'm saving it for close to the end. I got a great theory how I think Lommers okay. is going, but you know, I was. You, well, you've had an obsession it. with her to be dead, so you've probably like dreamt oh about my it. God. She's well, so mean. But we we see everybody who gets cut basically they get infected, right? So mm-hmm. right. I I wouldn't she, think any different for, with a bite. To be honest, I wouldn't. But um, but what if it's something different for our viewers? Or I guess maybe the different one would be Jana. She got cut and she's not infected, right? You know what I mean? Like, everybody who gets cut dies because they're getting infected. So what about the one that's going to throw us off? Like, they got cut, but they're not dying because it wasn't an infected cut. I think it's going to be Jana. Well, actually, I think they both make it. I don't think Jana's going to be infected. That's going to be good. But um, I don't, like, yeah, I don't think any of them are going to be infected. So everyone's going to be like, well, then. I think they're both safe. Okay. I I I I don't know if I can bank on the mom not being okay. infected she might be like All right. it, it'll be like the best way to be like oh my god i'm so sorry i love you right she did give a good no, final like, goodbye she for her character and that so. very like strong sense, like so she pulled herself for away her, it's time no to go. <laughs> no All right. yeah Mm-mm. but do you guys have any other predictions i think that uh I think we're gonna see canard's betray the team yeah. like definitely not not even like underhanded i think this time i think he's gonna fully do something that both jake and katie are gonna be like mm-hmm. like what what but happened before that he's gonna try putting the moves on katie that's uh, what i think i don't think jake is gonna let him get no he's course. not gonna let him get there but he's gonna try what's sad we're not gonna get cake with a c anymore Why? after this because then we see that jake and canards are gonna be in an argument Oh yeah. yeah, I think yeah. That's 
that relationship is going to go south. We're going to get more on that surveillance and everything. Oh, yeah. It's going to get more gonna intense. They're going to see something, yeah. Yeah, from here on out. So, unfortunately, two weeks, like I yeah. said, that's sad. But where can everybody tweet you in the meantime to talk about containment? Hey, guys, you can always find me to talk containment and any of the shows I'm on after Buzz TV at Double G on TV. We're also going to get some great NBA Finals action there. Follow me, too. <laughs> And same with me. You could tweet me on uh, Sports and Sass, and that's with three S's. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Katie E.E. Campbell. That's Katie with three E's Campbell. Instagram at Katie Campbell 13 and YouTube.com slash Katie Campbell online. And make sure that you tweet Tiana as well. She wishes she could be here. Unfortunately, she wasn't. So she's at the Tiana Hobson. And we will see you guys in two weeks. Two weeks. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.